Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, but more about them later. Hi everybody and welcome to the Surface Interval in association with Empora. So things not to say to another diver. Now, there are plenty of things that you shouldn't say to another scuba diver, many of which contain expletives that you shouldn't say to any human being, let alone specifically a scuba diver, but there are some scuba specific things that you shouldn't say to another diver. So to avoid any faux pas on a dive site or a dive boat, I wouldn't say any of these things on a dive. Most of these things are just about being a bit more humble in yourself and considering how others may perceive you and our community and industry as a whole. Some of these things are for new divers uh, and others for experienced divers, things and statements that have been learnt over time, but honestly need to change because there's a certain amount of animosity in the diving industry, which if you're new here, you probably have no idea about, but Let's jump in and talk about things not to say to another diver. If somebody has asked you a genuine question about diving, how to do something, what something means, how a certain piece of gear works or something, then they're trying to become a better scuba diver in themselves. The worst thing that you can do is belittle them and make them feel bad for just trying to learn something. The old statement of there are no stupid questions definitely applies for scuba diving. And while yes, there are some actual stupid questions that get asked, I'd rather someone ask them instead of hold it inside for fear of being belittled or mocked. Even if it's something so remedially simple to you, just answer their question honestly. They have specifically chosen you to ask you. They believe that you know what you're talking about and they can learn something from you. So take that as a compliment. All that making fun of them is going to do is make our community just look bad. They're probably going to stop scuba diving if they think that we're all like that. Or worse, they might bottle all of those little questions in and then make a mistake down the road and actually get hurt because they didn't want to ask a question because they thought it might be silly. So just be nice and answer their question or try to help them find the right answer. I've come across this at dive sites where a group of divers literally won't talk to you because you learned how to scuba dive through a different or certain training agency. And it's just nuts, to be honest. They somehow think they're automatically better than other divers because they have a different logo on their cert card. Now, I've seen amazing scuba divers and truly awful scuba divers from all different training agencies. The little symbol on your cert card doesn't matter. It doesn't make you a good or a bad scuba diver. We seriously need to get over this tr toxic tribal mentality of you're worse than me. Uh, who cares what training agency you learn to dive with? What really matters is what you can do in and out of the water. And I've seen everything from graffiti actually written in the algae on a shipwreck belittling a training agency to a diver knocking someone else's gear off a bench to get their gear out literally standing in between two divers who were having a chat to end that conversation because one of the divers was of a certain agency. It's just sad and it honestly just needs to end. I don't know why this is such a big thing, but I have been conditioned to just cringe every time I hear the word flipper or goggles or oxygen tank. They're terms, they're, they're close, but they are wrong terms. You hear it all the time on TV, movies, and in the news, broadcasters, they're, they're talking about a diver's oxygen tank. And whilst me and everybody else knows exactly what they're referring to, because it's technically, technically wrong and highly unlikely that a scuba diver is diving with a tank of pure oxygen, it, ugh, you just kind of have to cringe. It's just one of those things. Because my instructor said, don't call them flippers, I then go on to tell other divers, 
don't call them flippers. It truly doesn't matter. No one's going to get hurt. No one's going to get overly confused. But it is better if you do use the correct terminology. You're just going to show that you're a bit green and you don't, if you don't use the right terms. On a dive boat, if you say something like flippers or something, then you'll get a lot of divers in earshot watching you in and out of the water just to make sure that you don't hurt yourself because, yeah, you seem a bit green. So try to use the right terms if you can. You can't force another diver to push their limits or make them go somewhere they're not happy to go. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. Using peer pressure to force another diver into a, a cave or a shipwreck uh, to go to a deeper depth than they're qualified, even just going into rough waters that they don't want to, just because you want to go and you need a buddy to go with you, <sighs> It's a bad thing and you're only going to get the other diver hurt, or even yourself. You can ask them why they don't want to go any deeper or go into a certain cave system or whatever it is, but you can't push the point and try to force another diver to go somewhere they're not trained to, they don't have the equipment for, or if they're just not in the right mind frame. Now, I hurt my shoulder on a dive once and my buddy really wanted me to go on the second dive with him. I told him I wasn't going, and he asked again, and then after that he respected me by backing off. If I'd have gone on that dive and sort of went with peer pressure, and then my shoulder had acted up, it could have ended really badly for me or one of the other divers. It's always better to skip a dive than to force it. Divers are always hunting for a bargain. I get it, I'll, I'll shop around when I'm looking to buy something, but once you label a dive center as too expensive or whatever it is, then that's all that other diver will ever think about them and they'll just draw a line under them. Let them decide for themselves. It might be that that one time that you went to buy something, the dive center, the price hadn't been updated in a while, or gasp, the dive center was trying to make some money for once. Dive centers are closing left, right, and center because the competitive nature of the dive industry and the online industry slashes prices so dive centers can barely cover costs at the moment. Sure, if a dive center is continuously unprofessional, they, they do a bad job servicing your regulators or, or whatever, then you don't have to go back there, but just because a dive center was a little bit more expensive than some obscure website you found online isn't reason to never ever go back or tell others to avoid that dive center especially. Let them make up their own minds and paying a little extra now is worth it when your local dive center closes in a year's time and you now have to drive 30 miles to get an air fill. So there are a few things that you shouldn't really say to another diver. Obviously, there are other things that you shouldn't say to another scuba diver in polite conversation. Um, but let us know of any scuba diving faux pas uh, you may have heard on a dive boat or anything else you don't think should ever be said during a surface interval. Um, thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Being safe and secure online is more important than ever, with more and more companies wanting to get a hold of your information and sell it to the highest bidder. This is where ExpressVPN comes to the rescue. They have over 3,000 servers in 160 locations, spanning over 94 countries, and this list is growing day by day to help protect your online identity. Their VPN works on Mac, Windows, ISO, Android, and even routers. ExpressVPN even works with Netflix to help stream your media contents. So say you're a massive Office fan and you live in the US, you can't access that show on Netflix. Well, using ExpressVPN, you can connect to Netflix in the UK, which has the office as of recording, so you can binge watch that for the millionth time. For our viewers as well, you can get an extra three months free when signing up to a 12 month package by clicking the link pinned in the comments. So if you want to stay safe on the internet and watch your favorite streaming shows, then you should really consider ExpressVPN. Okay, back to the video.